I am glad to be with you today. Now let's get started. In survival model, parametric is used to estimate survival time for grouped and censored data, including covariates, and apply them to data from the cohort of people, considering as outcomes the death from all causes and some specific derived detailed and actionable insights from a survival analysis. Next, how to find the right distribution in a parametric survival model and different functions used in parametric survival model. Subtopic, distribution of T, I will explain about five major points. The first one is the survival distribution function. Second, the cumulative distribution function. Third, the probability density function. Fourth, the hazard rate function. And, lastly, the moment of random variable T. Survival distribution function is the probability that failure will occur after time T. For S at time 0 is equal to 1, and, S infinity is equal to 0. For cumulative distribution function, it is the probability that failure occur not later than time T. For F at time 0 is equal to 0, and, F infinity is equal to 1. For the special case of a continuous random variable, the probability density function, is defined as the derivative of cumulative distribution function. Thus Ft is equal to differentiate capital F and equal to negative differentiate capital S. Therefore, it is easy to say that capital F is equal to integrate PDF from 0 to T. And capital S equal to integrate PDF from T to infinity. So, of course, it must be true that when capital F plus with capital S is equal to 1. Hazard rate function is the conditional density of failure at time T, given, survival to time T. Hazard rate normally called the force of mortality. So, we can conclude that, hazard rate is equal to force of mortality. Thus, hazard rate is equal to unconditional density of failure at time T, divide with, probability of survival to time T. We know that, unconditional density of failure at time T is equal to, negative differentiate capital S. So, we can conclude that, hazard rate equal to negative differentiate ln S. In addition, cumulative hazard function CHF is the summation of hazard function or force of mortality. So, CHF is equal to integrate hazard rate from 0 to T. And it is also equal to negative ln S. And lastly, we can conclude that, capital S is equal to exponential power of negative cumulative hazard function. For the moment of random variable T, the first moment which is the expected time of failure, we can find it use two formulas. The first one is this, and the second one is this. For the second moment, which we use to find variance, the formula is this. And, after we as find the first and second moment, we can proceed to find the variance. The formula for variance is this. And, lastly, for the third moment which we use to check the skewness of the graph, we can find it use this formula. If the final answer is negative value, it means that the graph skewed to the left. And, if the final answer is positive value, it means that the graph is skewed to the right. Okay. That's all for subtopic the dis- Now let me introduce you a few examples of parametric models. This uniform distribution, the exponential distribution, the Maycam distribution, the Gompertz distribution, and the Weibel distribution. Next I will introduce you the properties of uniform distribution. The first small ft is equal to 1 over omega. Next, defined, capital ft, you need to integrate small ft with the interval of 0 to t which is equal to 1 over omega. Next is st is equal to 1 minus capital ft equal to omega minus d over omega. Lambda t is equal to small ft over st. After simplify, it will equal to 1 over omega minus t. The expected t is equal to omega over 2. And the variance of t is equal to omega square over 12. Uniform distribution, as a survival model, is not appropriate, over a broad range of time, at least, a model for human survival. Major use of this distribution, is over a, short ranges of time, or age. The exponential distribution properties, ft equal to exponent power of negative lambda t, while ft is equal to lambda exponent of negative lambda t, lambda t is equal to lambda, 
expected t is equal to 1 over lambda and expected t square is equal to 2 over lambda square. Variance d is equal to 1 over lambda square. The exponential distribution as a property of a constant hazard and it is frequently used in reliability engineering as a survival model for inanimate objects, such as machine parts. This distribution is not appropriate as a model for human survival of a. This is Gumpert's distribution. Lambda x is equal to bc with the power of x. And f x is equal to exponent power of b over natural logarithm c and multiply all with 1 minus c power of x. And this distribution was suggested as a model for human survival by Gumpert's. This is Makam distribution and it is clear that the PDF for this distribution is not mathematically tractable. So the calculation of probabilities, moments, or other quantities is somewhat difficult. And the last is Weibull distribution properties. This distribution is defined by lambda x is equal to k multiplied by x power of n, and the SDF given by Sx is equal to exponent of k multiplied by x power of n and over with n plus 1. Before I end my presentation, let's proceed with two questions, from this section, based on the properties, that I already explained earlier. If t is uniformly distributed over the interval of 1 to 3, find the variance of t. This is the solution. Second question is let x1 and x2, be independent random variables. Define the variables y is equal to minimum of x1, x2 and z equal to max x1, x2. First, show that the SDF of y is the product of the SDFs of x1 and x2. Be show that the CDF of z is the product of the CDFs of x1 and x2. C show that the x1 and x2 both have exponential distributions then y has an exponential distribution, but z does not. This is the solution for the question. I really hope that you could understand all these properties that we learned earlier. We have briefly explained, 5 distribution, 2 distributions are mathematically simple, which are uniform and exponential distribution, and the other 3 at the distribution are not. If you wish to avoid mathematical complexity, you could uniform or exponential distribution, for illustrative purpose only and not necessarily suggesting that they are applicable in practice. The exponential has been assumed to be applicable in many situations but not involving healthy human lives. That is all for me. Thank you. Jeez. For the last subtopic, I will explain about the transformations of random variables. Let y equal to gx be a function of x, such that, the inverse function is shown as below, as shown in the diagram, let y equal to gx be a strictly increasing function. Since gx is increasing, then if the x is less than or equal to x, it follows that y is less than or equal to the unique value of y. So, the probability of these events are equal. So, the equation will be like this. From this equation, we can derive the relationship for the SDF. PDF and the HRF as well. Since, SDF is the complement of the CDF, the equation will become like this. Next, the PDF is the derivative of the CDF, so we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to Y, then we will obtain this formula. Since HY is simply, we can write the equation like this. And, finally, the HRF is the ratio of the PDF to the SDF. So, we can say that the equation will become like this. So, this is the end of chapter 2, we hope that this video will help you to understand more about this chapter. Thank you for watching this video, and, bye bye everybody.